Okay, let's continue very quick. So now, up to now, right now, you know you should be able to determine the type of data you are holding. It's either unstructured, that will be stored in a document database or a structured data that will be stored in relational database and should your 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 data be stored in a document database the main query you are going to use is no sql n o s q l whilst if you are using relational database you are going to use sql which stands for structured query language okay if you've gotten this let's take a quick practice on our knowledge So I'm actually going to show you data types. Then you tell me if it is a relational database or document database. But however, it's for it's it's for data. I have four data types here. So I'm going to show you. Then you tell me if it's a relational database or document database it will be required to store it okay so i'm showing on my screen um where is it um, Okay, so please be watching your screen. Now, this data. As a data scientist, where will you store it? Which type of database are you going to store? This is the first one. Does it fall under a relational database or are you going to store it in the document database? Test from various emails sent and received by you. Yes, anyone? Document database. Sir. Okay, okay. Sir. Anyone? Sir, document database. Perfect. Okay. Kennedy. Yeah, please document database okay that's great okay very quick okay customer information for all students of a university such as name phone number and location yes fast fast it's a relation database relational okay the next one yes please i'll go for relation okay 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 that's great, relational database. Now, images of different traffic events, including metadata about the images contents. This one. Um, step, please, same relational. Relational. Oh, wow. Same relational. Any other? Any other person? Say documents. Documents. Oh, okay. Okay. So it is document database because it is, is an image. And we, we saw that images, tests, um, social media posts, they are all they are all supposed to be stored in document 
database. Okay, now we have the last one, date, time, subject, recipient addresses for all emails you ever sent. This one is very tricky. What do you think? Is it document database or relational database? Relational database. Okay. The relational. Okay, Kennedy. It's a confusing. <laughs> Okay. but okay. i'll go for relational i'll go for relational. okay it's relational because it's very tricky the reason why i say it's very tricky because they have emails in it don't be tricked they said so what they are focusing here in the data is dates it is saying the dates time subject and recipient addresses for all emails you uh, you ever send it means you don't need the emails you need these vital things and these vital things are being stored in tabular tabular form. You get it now. Oh, okay, please. Okay. Thank okay. You. You're welcome. Very quick. So as a data scientist, know how what data you are holding, then you actually um do good with your data. now the next thing is the next thing we are going to consider is data pipeline data pipeline a data pipeline a data pipeline now what is actually a data pipeline and what does it mean when we say data pipeline data pipeline so far we've learned about data collection and storage and so when we are being given data right now and we tell us we should that we should store it we should know okay no before that i think um i should test you again on 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 on, on. i have one more test i can okay now um i'm coming to test you again so that i will know if you've actually understood this thing now i'm coming to show you something um Someone collected data for a data science project he is working on. Now his goal is to build face recognition algorithm and to do that he has collected thousands of images. Now he needs to decide on which cloud provider to choose for storing this data. Which of the following? I'm coming to show you it's not a cloud service provider. It's not a cloud service provider. So I'm coming to show you the options then you choose from it. Okay, so I'm showing you the, the options. So which of the following is not a cloud service provider? It's not part of the cloud storage services that has been provided across the world. Choose the odd one out. I'm displaying my screen so that you choose the odd one. Possible answers. We have Google Cloud, Amazon Web Services, Microsoft, as then we have SQL Server. Which of the following? It's not part of cloud providers. Anyone? If you are a data scientist and you are going to you are going to go 
you are going for a cloud, then you get to the, the company who, are, who is going to assist you and you are being presented to choose the odd one out here. Okay, Kennedy. Yes, please, I'll go for SQL Server. Why SQL Server? Um, I'll go for SQL Server because um, mm -hmm. it's, 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 a, it's a document database and it, it doesn't have um, um, structured data. That's why I'm going for it. Okay. Um, Okay, okay. Anyone else? Yeah, I'll go for SQL Server. Why? Because it's um, it's a unique code for um, rational database. Okay, okay. Anyone else? Okay, your, 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 your answers, if it were to be three over three, I would have given you guys two over three, two over three. You chose the correct answer, but your explanation is way off. Okay. When we talk about SQL Server, SQL Server, you can actually build your own SQL Server. But among these, among these options, Google is an organization. Amazon is an organization and Microsoft is an, is an organization. Now, when you talk about cloud server or cloud storage, it is just a company server. You are going to plead with them and store your data on it so that you will pay. That's all, that's the definition for cloud anything cloud that's the definition the company has a storage so let me bring it very low the company has a hard disk drive which is very big they have about two terabytes something then you don't have you don't have money to buy your hard drive so you've gone to them you've actually paid for services for them to store your data for you that's the meaning of cloud storage so any cloud google cloud amazon Microsoft. Now, the reason why we will choose SQL Server here is it is the only one we can build with ourselves. So the rest, they are company service, which we are going to pay. So that makes it not a cloud server. It is not associated with any company. We can build our own L uh, SQL Server on our machine, local machine we use. Okay. That's very great. Now let, let, let let's move on. Mm -hmm. Let's try this too to test your understanding too. Now in this exercise, it's a query. You are going to choose the type of query in the database that we did this from. So I'm running a query. Okay. Now, let me give you a preview. Okay, so I'm coming to show you a query I just ran. I will explain the query to you, then after that, we'll go and choose the type of database we run that query from. Okay, so kindly watch my screen, on my screen.
so on my screen so i'm coming to explain this thing i think i should close this okay now on my screen i run a query this is the meaning of the query select star from purchases where product should be equal to toothbrush this is how it means it means select everything from the database from a column called purchases where the product is a toothbrush i ran my query and i got this so tooth, 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 toothpaste this is it the product toothpaste and um, shipping weight cost here yeah. now what do you think this query forms under which database i'm coming to show you the possible answers right does a query false and the relational database does requiring a no sql or relational database that's requiring sql or document database that is using no sql or document database using sql anyone I think it's a document database with, with, with not only SQL. Okay, that's right. Yes, Kennedy, I, I saw you. Yes, so I was going for, um, it's, it's, it's in a form of tables, right? So I was going for... Um, no, additional... I'm going for, I'm going for... I'm going for, I'm going, I'm going for... Um, relational database mm -hmm. um, with um, SQL. Okay. Anyone else? Anyone? Okay. Now let me explain it. Let me show you the database again. The query again. So this is the query. The query says select all from all the columns, specifically from table purchases, where products should be equal to toothbrush. Then it gave us the column of products, gave us shipping, gave us cost. Now, the first analysis for you to do is either this database is in a document form or it's relational, that's in table. We can see that it is in a table form. That means document databases are out. And with our knowledge, when we were starting, I told you guys that document database goes with no SQL query and relational database goes with SQL queries. So let's check our answers. So the first one says, Relational database with no SQL query. That's wrong because relational database goes with SQL quer uh, queries. So the second one says relational database with an SQL. This is correct. It's in table form and so it falls under relational database. Automatically, we are using SQL. SQL. For the third one says document database, no SQL. Should it be a document database, this one would, would have been true because it is using a no SQL query. But there is no document database with an SQL query. Please take note, relational database goes with SQL query and document database goes with no SQL queries. So you, know, you, first, you, have, you, you have to first decide what data are you holding. The data you are holding, is it a picture, test, email, or social media test or messages. If it falls under that one, it means it's a document. It's a file, it's a video, it's an image, it's a test. It falls under document database. Hence, the database you are going to build should use a no SQL structure or query structure to actually get your database. 
But if the document you are holding is about putting them in table, like in Excel form or in this type of table, you can arrange them in columns, automatically it falls under relational database. Hence, you are going to use the query language SQL. Great, let's proceed. By now, you should be catching and grasping more things as a data scientist. Now, we are coming to understand data pipeline. Data pipeline. Data pipeline. So far, we've learned about data collection and storage but how can we scale all this this is where something called data pipeline come inside this is where we, something called data pipeline come inside in fact data scientists work to collect and store data you analyze it this data scientist will also assess the data for your work whether it's for visualization or building models or making data-driven decisions. Okay, now, for example, consider real-time streaming data, which is data that is continuously being generated like tweets from all around the world. This makes storing this incoming data complicated because as a data scientist, you want to make such data organized and easy to access. Now, you see, you sometimes find yourself wanting in such situation. If you work in this organization like Twitter, Facebook, those things, you realize that the data you are using is in real time. It keeps on coming. How you store such data? Because actually you are going to do with test images. People are sending images. People are sending videos a whole lot. That's that that one means particularly you are going to deal with document database. But how are you going to what how are you going to even organize this data that keeps on coming around the whole world? About let me say you have about 500 million people tweeting at the same time. This coming, this deleting. So imagine the work of these data scientists at these huge organizations. How are they able to organize this data and actually assess it, make the access accessible, like make it accessible or easy accessible? This is where data pipeline comes inside. Data pipeline comes inside. A data pipeline moves data into defined stages. A data pipeline moves data into defined stages for example from data ingestion through an api to load data into a database a key feature is that data pipelines automate this movement okay it's very simple it's very simple i'm done reading everything it's very simple now let me explain it you got the opportunity to work with twitter or Facebook or any of these social media platform, um, Snap, Telegram, in any of them you can actually think about your 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 TikTok. Yes. Now the data with this type of organization, their data keep on coming every second. Someone is TikToking or someone is chatting, someone is Facebooking, someone is tweeting. Someone is Snapchatting, videos, sending everything. It keeps coming. How you as a data scientist, you are going to actually organize this data and make it accessible. How are you going to do it? This is where data pipeline come inside. Now, a data pipeline moves data in defined stages. Data pipeline moves data in defined stages. Now, this is how data pipeline works. You actually, in fact, configure your data source. There is the data ingestion. 
through an API. Okay. In fact, the next time we are meeting, we are going to um please take note tomorrow. We are not meeting tomorrow. Um, in fact, take it to relax yourself. Tomorrow we are not meeting. I'm actually traveling. Um, I'm going out, so tomorrow we are not me meeting. I'll come back next week. Probably Monday. Okay. Now, this is it. API is application programming interface. This means, in fact, um, let me let me show you API. Let me show so that you understand what I'm trying to. Because without it, you won't understand data pipeline. API. Show you an image of how API works. Perfect. I've gotten a perfect image to demonstrate even the whole data pipeline. This is very great. Perfect. Oh, uh, I think I still not. I think you can see it. Okay. Now, what you are seeing on my screen, it's a perfect data pipeline. Now, you will see you have a website. It keeps getting traffic from Apple, Android users, so Mac OS or iOS people are here. Android people are here. Windows people are here. And these are the browsers. So your company keeps getting data from these people. They are all coming. How are you going to organize this data in this data? Because you need to take your time and organize data, this data here. How are you going to? This is where this thing comes inside, API. In fact, the API is going to help you arrange this data in order before it, trans it, it actually transmits them in a linear way so that it can arrange, take its time and arrange. You can't just connect your database to the traffic. There is no way, it's not going to work. You are going to, in fact, disorganize your work. You need something in the intermediate that's going to define the data in stages and take its time to transfer them one by one. So all the traffic will come here, they will be waiting the API day. So this API, it serves as an interface connecting your database and the various traffic. The API will serve as an interface connecting your database here to this traffic that are coming. So let me say to do to this tweet. So these are Twitter, Twitter comments that are coming. So the API, the API will take them, it will hit the API, it will take them, then the API will take them one by one to onto one path. One path, one path, then it starts organizing in your database. Very simple. This is the whole concept behind data pipeline. How you they use you as a data scientist working in this large organization whereby data is being real-time data. It's not like you store data. You, you've conducted a survey, then they, they are finished and providing the details and you have the data. No, this time it's real time. It keeps on coming. You need API. And all this process is termed as data pipeline. Any question, please? Any question? So in data pipeline, as you can see, the API organizes everything. Then it takes a time to transmit the data in a linear form so that when it gets to your database, it can be stored perfectly without any um, 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 breakages. Any question? Okay.
So I will send you an assignment for you to do for me. I'll send you some cards. In fact, you classify the cards under extract, transform, and load. Extract means extracting data. Transform means transforming the data. Load, load means going to arrange the data in the database. I will send it to you. Then you take it as an assignment. Then do it in um, your comfortable like time. In your comfort time, you do it. Any question, please, before we end the class. Right. If there are no questions, I will send a recording so that those who couldn't join to will get the chance to learn. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining this class. Tomorrow, we are not having a class tomorrow. Thank you.